Hi everybody, it's a little teensy weensy smidgen less hot than yesterday. Um, so I'm happy. It's not perfect, but I'll take it. 85 is fine. 90, that's when I'm going to be like, check please. <laughs> um, and it's a dry heat, so it doesn't really, you know. So I found out the other day that my grandfather was a serial killer. Isn't that insane? I was home, I was visiting my family in Maryland last week, and we have a bunch of old home movies on these, they're called VHS-C tapes. So if you had a camcorder in the early 2000s, late 90s, they are, that's probably what they are. Um, basically, they're like little tiny VHS tapes. And so many times over the years that we, we've said, we need, really need to digitize those, you know, because we're not going to have them forever. They're, they're starting to degrade. Um, but we never got around to it. And then recently I was at a thrift store and I found a CRT TV. I'm sorry, I'm, I know I'm throwing a lot of, around a lot of technical jargon. Um, that's kind of my thing I'm kind of interested in. I'm a little bit of a geek, you know, so I like that kind of stuff. But basically it's the old tube TVs. And it has a VCR built into it. It's really cool. Um, and so I was like, of course, I'm going to buy this. And I've had it for a long time. And recently, I figured out how I could get my laptop onto the TV and vice versa so that I could record VHS tapes onto my computer and then record things on my computer to VHS with VHS tapes, which is a fun thing for, you know, art projects and stuff like that. Um, so anyway, long story short, I said, well, I have a really great setup now out there in LA. Why don't I take some with me and I can start converting them for us and I'll put them all in a Google Drive and it'll be great. And so my parents were like, okay. I think that they didn't really believe that I was gonna do it because I say a lot of things that I don't ultimately do. Um, but I said, no, I'm at, I, I was committed. I took a Ziploc baggie full of about 10 of them brought it on the airplane, wrapped it in bubble wrap, you know, because these are precious memories here. Um, and then I was sort of, I, I, I experimented with one and it was actually very, very fun and easy. I cannot explain what a therapeutic healing thing it is to see, to watch yourself as a baby, an infant, and watch your parents interacting with you as a baby. It's a crazy, mind-blowing, insane experience. It was honestly kind of spiritual, I would say. So it was really cool playing the videos and being able to see like, hey, there's my old room, you know, there's my old alarm clock, um, there's all this stuff. I remember when the backyard used to look like that, you know. Um, and then I put one into the, there's, it's called a play pack, yeah, which is basically you put the VHSC tape into it and it you shut the door and it stretches it out so that it's a normal VHS tape and you can play it in a normal VCR. Anyway, I put it in the VCR and I press play and it was my grandpa with a very nice looking young woman, you know. Um, and then he cut her head off. Literally, I was like, whoa, because I had just pressed play. I had barely even gotten, I was still sitting over at the computer because you have to put the v v VHS tape into the VCR and then you have to start, there's a software that you have to start recording on the, on the computer. So I was over here like this, the TV's over here and the computer's over here. So I was getting all that set up, you know, and I was hitting play. And then all of a sudden I heard a, <laughs> and, a <laughs> and I was like, whoa, I turn over to look at the TV and I just see, Excuse me, I'm parked uh, uphill slightly, so <sighs> I'm telling you, Subaru Studios. Are we still recording? Okay, good. all right. So I look over at the TV because I was hearing the screaming and the sp splooging. I think that's not, I think that's something else. Sp uh, the the splooshing. Um, and I just see a I don't want to get too graphic because I don't want to, first of all, the windows are open. And then also I don't, I still want to be able to monetize this, obviously. So let's just say 
imagine what I just said, and then imagine logically the next thing that would be happening. And that's what was happening, basically. Um, so I was like, oh my gosh. And at first I thought maybe that it was some kind of joke, or maybe it was a Halloween prank or something. Um, but it wasn't Halloween, because the date thing on it said March 26th or whatever. So it couldn't have possibly been farther from Halloween. So I was like, what the hell could this possibly be? Um, I watched it again, and I was like, if this is fake, if this is special effects, it is the best work I have ever seen. My, if that, that special effects, my grandfather should have been working with John Carpenter, who's an 80s movie director, um, who have had good special effects in his movies, I think. Um, I'm more into the sort of like practical effects, and I don't like all this, you know, green screen Marvel movie crap. I like it when it's real and you can feel the um, tactile nature of it, you know. Um, what was I talking about? So, okay, I watched it again, and I, like I said, yeah, if it was real, then it was crazy good. So, I f captured the whole thing onto my computer because I wanted, nothing else happened in that tape. It was weird because it was like the head getting cut off and then the screaming. Well, it was, it was kind of more like, do you hear that? Who the fuck goes in their garage and plays the drums in the middle of the day? I've heard this guy do this before. Now I'm realizing why I never parked here, but I already got started I'm too far into the video. I can't stop now. So we're just gonna have to deal with the drumming. Hopefully the, I'm usually pretty pleasantly surprised by the iPhone noise reduction. So hopefully it's, you can't really hear it very well. I watched back the video where I said I effed my girlfriend's dad and you couldn't even hear, I made such a big deal about the hammering on the roof and you couldn't even hear it in the video. So I just looked like a crazy person. I'm not crazy. There was hammering in the sound in the video. And if you can't hear the drums, there is a drum sound. Let's, let me real, real quick pause and see if you can hear it. The car is going by. Do you hear that? Wait for these cars to pass. Sounds like it's 80 beats per minute. Am I right? Somebody check. So the rest of the video, this is gonna be really distracting, but I'm gonna try my best. The video was him cutting the person's head off and then it was splooshing. And then it just cut immediately to us at mini golf. And that's what the rest of the video was. It's crazy on, the, on those VHS tapes because it's, you know, you. a lot of times you would record over stuff and then you would only have a certain amount of tape so you would put the tape in and you would just record over what you already recorded we forgot that all that stuff because now we have digital and it's so much easier but um so i don't know if maybe there was more on that tape or maybe it was a situation where it had been in the camcorder for just that five seconds and then um and then you know it it cut to and then we just took it to mini golf a couple weeks later and then I also thought maybe it's a movie, you know, maybe he had recorded a movie or something, but it was very clearly my grandfather. I mean, I reckon I can recognize his body from the neck down, you know, and uh, there were a couple of times when he, he sort of showed, it was a very short clip. Basically, I, all right, all right, you, you guys get it. Sorry, I'm trying to stop. People always comment and say that I ramble on and on about things and I'm trying to stop and trying to stop doing that if I just have, um, you know, a little scatterbrained. So I wasn't really sure what to do about this because how do you, you know, I mean, I, I, I was not prepared to ever be in this situation before. So I called my mom. I kind of forgot about it, honestly. And then a few days later, I called my mom and uh, we were talking about some crap that didn't matter. And then uh, I, I said, uh, she said, how's the video transfer going? And I was like, oh my gosh, it's so fun. It's so cool to see, you know, uh, the, the, you know, all of us, uh, you know, 
us young and and to see how our family you know interacted and and it's just it's crazy to me that you can you, there's a timer or a clock superimposed on the video so it counts through this literally like the minutes and the hours so it'll be like september 12th on 2002 11 41 a.m and then the house has the seconds on there and it counts the seconds up and up and up and so it's crazy to look to see the stuff happening and then to look at the seconds counter counting up because it's like I'm getting chills just thinking about it. It's like there's a this is a moment in history that has been embalmed basically in this video. It's literally like we took that moment and put it in a bottle, literally a bottle because it was the camera and preserved it forever in amber. It's crazy. And I'm sorry, I'm really getting into this, but I've, I've always been kind of a film guy and all that stuff. So so that sort of thing has always interested me and that's I'm fascinated by it. So anyway, um, so I was explaining that to all of her, to my mom, and then I was like, there was one very weird video, though, with Grandpa cutting a lady's head off. Do you know, have you seen, do you know anything about what that could have been? Was he doing a joke? Like, was he, you know, um, into special effects or any of that stuff? And she was just like, uh, over the phone. And I was like, what? And she was like, Dan, um, Grandpa was a serial killer. And I laughed because I thought she was joking, you know, because that's a crazy thing to say. Um, and I was like, <laughs> good one, Mom, that's a good one. And she said, no, it's true. Now he's playing the piano. You're not, um, I'm trying to think, I tried to think of a musician, but I couldn't think of one who played drum. Ooh, I was trying to think of a musician that famously played drums and piano. So I could be like, oh, you're not Stevie Wonder or whatever. I know that he didn't do that, but I, I mean, maybe he did. I don't know. The only thing I know about Stevie Wonder is that he's blind. Sorry. Anyway, I'm getting off track again. Um, one day when I'm rich and famous, we won't have this problem. And I'll look back on these days and I'll be like, wow, what, that was really a gorilla operation. Gorilla, by the way, when I say it in that context, I don't mean like a ooga booga gorilla. I mean like gorilla style shooting, G-U-E-R-I-L-L-A. A lot of people, last time I used that word, a lot of people were very confused. That means it's sort of like a, it comes from the word gorilla. <coughs> It comes from the term guerrilla warfare, which is when it's sort of like not organized and it's just kind of like, whoa, you know, and then so, so it's like guerrilla shooting, photography and videography. So anyway, um, my, my, so my mom was like, yeah, he was a serial killer um, in the 90s, early 2000s. And I was sort of... Because we knew my grandfather. He would come over every Tuesday and he would help me with my homework. So I was like, what are you talking about? Grandpa was a serial killer. And she said, well, we didn't know at the time. It was only after he died and we went through his things that we discovered, you know, that, that he sort of had kept a journal and he had kept a lot of trophies and stuff. Um, and the nickname that they gave him, my family, I guess, was the Delmarva Slasher, which the Delmarva is a, is, uh, if you've ever seen a, a map of Maryland, on the side closest to the ocean, there's this weird peninsula where it's Delaware and then Maryland and then a little tiny piece of Virginia. And it's very, very strange. That's called the Delmarva Peninsula. Um, it's very beautiful. They have a lot of very beautiful beaches. Um, a lot of nice Assateague National Seashore. Um, if you've ever been there, there's wild horses that literally roam the beach. We would go camping there. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, God. We would go camping there. And you would wake up in the middle of the night and a horse would have its face stuffed in your picnic basket. It was insane. 
And they say the reason why there are horses there is because there was a shipwreck. You ready for this? There was a shipwreck where the horses escaped from the boat and they swam ashore and then they populated the island with wild horses. It's insane. And I don't think there's anywhere else in the entire United States that's like that. Um, so thankfully it's a, it's protected, you know, by the government and it's a, you know, national. That's one thing that they do right is national parks and national park system. Um, so again, I lost track again, sorry. Damn. Oh, so, okay. The Delmarva slasher. So I said to my mom, well, did you tell anybody or, or because I've never heard of the Delmarva Slatter before or anything about any of this. And she said, well, we, you know, we, it was a very difficult moral choice when we, when he died. And I remember when he died very vividly, it was horrible. It, you know, obviously my mother was very broken up about it. And, um, it was just, I had never, I was kind of young. So I, and I had never really experienced loss before. So it, it sort of immediately didn't really feel like I think I've talked about this concept before in the past where it was like, it didn't, it was like, oh, the, the guy, he's just not here. He's gone somewhere, you know, he's on vacation or something. And then it's not until a year or two goes by and that you're like, oh, he is not coming back, is he? You know? Um, and my mom was like, yeah, well, we, it was a really, really difficult decision, but we ultimately decided that it would just, it was so long ago and he's dead we really don't want to, we feel like we would be just creating a problem that doesn't exist, you know? And I said, well, what about the victims? Who were the victims? How many people was it? And she said, I don't know. We never figured out that part. Um, it was at least 10. And I was like, mom, this is crazy what you are saying to me right now. And she's like, I know, I'm sorry. I've just gotten desensitized to it over the years because I sort of had to, when she was telling me that when she found out initially, that was very, very, very disturbing. But then over the years, you know, they, they not, they had to make their peace with it, you know? And I understood that because it's sort of like, you can only, I remember people me, telling me that people still tell me that about my family that died, my, my wife and my baby, you know? People will say, well, how come you're so, I'm so casual about it. I make jokes about it all the time. And people will say to me, do you, you know, they're kind of taken aback. And I'm like, well, I have to live every single day with the knowledge that this happened. If I walk around every day and I'm crying my eyes out constantly, then I'm not going to be functional. I'm going to jump off a cliff. So I have had to sort of callous over it and not care anymore. That's the only way I can live. You know, and I think that there's a lot to say about I've thought sometimes about being a motiv motivational speaker before, because I have a lot of thoughts that I think are pretty revolutionary about grief and about how, in my experience, grieving is bad when you when it initially happens. But then you grieve. There's a certain point where grieving becomes wallowing and victimizing yourself and saying, oh, woe is me, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm so sad. At a certain point, you have to just kind of get over it. And I think that that, I know that that, again, sounds very callous, but you will see if something, I don't know if any of you have ever lost people, but I'm sure that you would all agree, eventually you get over it and you don't really care anymore. That's just the way that it is. It's not that you don't love them. It's just, you forget, you forget what they were like. So how could you miss them because they're not around anymore? I'm sorry, this wasn't what the video was supposed to be about, but it's just obviously it's something that I feel very passionate about because I'm so sick of people saying you're a psychopath, you don't care, you're, you're you know, why you have this attitude about it? And that's not the case at all. That's not the case at all. Um, well, I guess it is the case. It's just that it's not for the reasons that you think. Or maybe it is for the reasons that you think. And it's just that what you think isn't bad. You know what I mean? It's not bad to people say psychopath, but we need psychopaths in a lot of areas of life. We need, you know, my surgeon, if I have to get surgery, brain surgery, I don't want my surgeon being like, oh my God, I, uh, uh, I'm cutting a guy's head off. Oh. I want him to be even keeled, not caring at all. 
and I want him to slice and dice me like a piece of lunch meat. Get the job done. That's what I want. And so I think that we sort of, psychopaths get a bad rap, honestly, in this society, you know? We think psychopaths are people like Ted Bundy and, and my grandfather, which that is a portion of them, but a much, much larger portion are actually very functional members of society, and it's not a bad thing at all. I've thought about that, I mean, I'll probably make a video at one point, you know, sort of trying to destigmatize psychopathy um, in the future, but not today. That's not really what I want to talk about right now. Um, so, I have to admit that when my mom told me that, I was sort of, you know, um, aghast. And I said, well, it, do you have any other, in, like, do, do, you, do you, who were the people? You know, I tried to Google it, and there was nothing because they never reported it. So, I was like, do you know anybody who maybe would have, like, what kind of stuff did you find, basically? And she said, well, we, we found, um, he had had a basement where he had a bunch of videotapes like that, and we tried to, we, we tried to put them in another, in another box, but one might have just slipped into the, you know, we have a lot of stuff in our attic, so... One must have just fell into the other box, and then we took that one and put it into our camcorder, probably. Um, and then I said, well, can you send me Grand Grandpops then? Can you send me those? Because I feel like that's a very, that's a dangerous thing to have. Um, and she was like, well, you know, it's really expensive to ship stuff cross country. So why don't you just, when you, if you really are that interested, when you get back home, you can take a look yourself. And so I was like, okay, I guess that's okay. I mean, I don't know. What else am I supposed to say, you know? Um, and so I sort of took it upon myself to, I tried to like search people who went missing from, you know, whenever, I guess it would have been um, 1930 to 2010 in the Delmarva Peninsula. But it was such a long, it was insane to try to sift through all that. And I have ADHD, so I just was like, okay, this is not going to work. Uh, maybe if I, maybe one day when I'm rich and famous and I can pay an intern to do this, then that's fine. Or, you know, if AI gets smart enough that I can use AI, you know, beep boop, find out all the people my grandfather killed, you know. Um, so anyway, yeah, I just thought that was really crazy because I don't know. It's just not something you see every day. I mean, I had never really on, you know, a lot of, I had a lot of friends who were really into sort of stuff like that, like live leak back in the day. And then people at middle school would be like, oh, look at the machete. You know, somebody, uh, you know, it's a guy sticking a can or a uh, mason jar up his ass, you know. And I was like, I don't want to see that, please. Because I was a very sensitive kid. So I was sort of like, I, you know, that's going to bother me for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and years and my entire life. So I always sort of avoided that. Um, and I guess, you know, I, I, as I got older, I sort of stopped. That kind of stuff didn't really affect me as much. And I have to be very, very careful how I talk about this. Um, there's a lot of stuff that I don't necessarily want to say online for 130,000 people. 130,000 people. Can you believe that? 130,000 subscribers. YouTube sent me an award. Oh, sorry. I lost my breath. YouTube sent me an award, a silver plaque that said, congratulations, Dan Henschel on 100,000 subscribers. I was like, oh my gosh, I never, ever, ever. I'm so not used to being treated like that um, by anybody really, but especially being on TikTok. TikTok didn't give a flying crap about creators obviously they didn't because they're they, they didn't send me an award when i almost got two million followers on there they rewarded me by banning me and i'll never make another account i'll never go back ever i've talked about that many many times um okay well i guess i i, I guess that's it i don't know i think maybe I'll, I'll i'll update you guys if there's any other if i come upon any other information but honestly it's you know i got a lot going on right now and so i don't it's just sort of i mean i you're the first people that i've told so i don't know
Another thing is that I... <sighs> he just wasn't really the greatest guy. Um, he was, he, I have a couple of memories of him with us, me and, you know, my siblings, my sister in particular, that are very dark. And so that's, I was sort of just like, you know what, me and my sister said, let's just forget about that feller, you know, and move on with our lives. And so I haven't told her yet. Um, I don't know if I ever will anyway, because... For her, it's a little different, you know. So, okay, anyway, um, I'll see you guys later. Stay cool out there. <laughs>